let's talk about proprietary inbound. Um, I'm a former consultant, so I like two by twos. And so I have this two by two here. Um, on one axis, we have our returns. So higher return deals versus generally lower return deals. And then our second axis, we have the effort required to do this deal. Is it a hard deal or is it an easy deal? Obviously, no deal is an easy deal, but in terms of effort to source the deal. So at the top left, we have what we call proprietary or outbound. That's you getting on the phone, emailing, reaching out to companies, executives, business owners directly. That's pretty hard to do, but if you can do it well, the returns are generally higher. The second one we have is inbound. That could be bankers and brokers bringing you deals, deal marketplaces, generally easier to find these deals, but lower returns because they're more competitive. So what we all want to do is we all want to be in the top right. We want easier deals that have higher returns. And so the way we're going to talk about doing that, and we use the acronym PBD to describe proactive business development, is how you can be more proactive with your inbound and referral sources to get those pot of gold deals. All right, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce one of our guest speakers, Scott Estill. And today he's going to talk to us about how to use industry veterans and executives to generate deal flow for your business. But we find when you're doing M&A, the executive, when that person is calling a prospective company and saying, hey, here's our thesis, here's a couple platforms we have, you're one of them, I want you to join me on this journey. And this is why we picked your company to be a critical puzzle piece in this business that we're building. That's a very different conversation than someone like me in my former life as a banker or a PE professional calling them saying, hey, you want to sell? And that family member says, uh, you know, or the owner's like, oh, you know, it just feels sort of caustic or rude or, you know, not collaborative, right? Even if you're using a buy side shop. But when you have an executive making that call and you're talking executive to executive and they can say, listen, I have the opportunity to work with hundreds of PE firms. Here's why I chose this PE firm. Here's why they're the anti-private equity, private equity firm, if you will. And here's our plan. Here's how you fit into it. Come join me. It's very meaningful. So we, and the returns that we get, because we co-invest in all these deals, are very, you know, they're in the top quartile because an executive who's smart is saying, this plan doesn't work or does work. And they're more operationally savvy about how to get things done. So we're going to move to our next guest speaker, Bartley O'Dwyer. Bartley is an MD. And today he's going to talk about a few different angles working with bankers and lenders, advisors, valuation firms, and even how you work your own personal relationships if you have a history of being in the industry. Yeah, I would say we, I've spoken to numerous sponsors who, you know, similar to the way I think Scott mentioned, and he and I have spoken in the past where, you know, you know, you know, a firm has done a deal, they bring in a CEO or a CFO, and you know that it's a three to five year timeline when they're going to exit that company. So not only does it mean that the company is going to come back to market, it means that those executives are likely going to be on the beach after an exit. So talking to them, talking to the executives six months in advance or talking to the companies as soon as they've taken on new investment is really important. So we've, we've spoken to numerous firms who are talking to those companies within the first year of the, of the last investment. Um, and I'd say, yeah, we've, we've heard of many situations where there's a ring fence process of three to five firms that over the course of a hold period, the executive team together with the investor in some cases have really gotten to intimately know an investor to the extent where they're almost having informal board meetings or presentations around how the company is doing so they can track and getting some advice as to what, how can they continue to make that asset um, more attractive to the potential next buyer down the road. Um, so I think that's really uh, a trend. Now it takes effort. It takes a lot of of planning and getting ahead of it and kind of um, you know playing long ball. But it's it's something that we're seeing quite a bit of. So John Kitchen is the vice chair of private equity at Cozen O'Connor. Um, he's going to talk to us about working with lawyers, how lawyers can help you generate deals beyond the transaction. When it comes to working with lawyers to, to generate deal flow, and, and judging by who's in this call, it seems like it's more investors advisors. I'm not sure we have many corporate lawyers on the phone, but but I think what I've found, and, and, and I'm the son of entrepreneurs, I, I've sort of always naturally been interested in, in people, their businesses, and, and what's made them tick and what's made them successful. And, and I think it's a lot easier for me, perhaps, to build a network of, of like-minded, entrepreneurial, you know, commercial-oriented people 
and seeing who could potentially benefit from someone who's in your network. I think that's been kind of a key to, for, for my career and my growth and development, just because you're someone who people are going to turn to, right? And, and if you're at a bank, if you're a sponsor and, and you see, you know, at law, you're working with lawyers all the time, right? You're working with lawyers on deals, you're working on LOIs, you're working on diligence. It, it, it should be pretty clear, you know, who the lawyers who are like-minded to you and, and good at what they do are. And, and I would encourage you to go out and get to know them, get to know what their interests are, who are their other clients? Are, are they at a law firm? You know, what are, the, what are their law firms good at? What you'll what you'll really want to look for are, are lawyers that both touch clients and execute work, who understand the dynamics of the industries they work in, who are on the ground. But it's it's just it's knowing who's good at what and, and who else might benefit from that, right? So I, I think if if you have that and you and you're genuine about it, right, personally for your own success, that'll shine through. So just as a recap, six ways to get deals to come to you. Working more effectively with bankers and brokers to be at the top of their shortlist. I love what you all said about go let's process maybe three or five parties, especially a limited process, and you want to be on that list. How do you work that relationship to get on that list? Number one. Number two, working with lawyers beyond the transaction as trusted advisors to companies and sponsors. They can send deals in your direction. Number three, financial advisors. We talked about valuation, advisory, accountants, who can bring you deals. Four, other investors. Five, events and conferences. And then finally, last but not least, executives. If you're working with an executive search firm, if you're already reaching out to CEOs directly and they say, hey, I'm not going to sell my business, that could be a referral for you. That could be your next board member or advisor. These are all valuable ways to get deals. So if you're interested... Grata is a solution to help you with this holistic, proactive deal making and touches on all the different factors we talked about today. Um, we're happy to share more if you're an existing user about how you can use Grata to do this, or if you're not, how you could use Grata to kickstart this program of proactive business development.